Hello there, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to my channel. I look very forward to introducing you to Downward Facing Dog today, a posture that we have in most of our, especially vinyasa, a flow class. And yeah, it's also a really good way of quickly doing a yoga practice. If you don't have much time, if you just feel like you want to get the whole body moving, Downward Facing Dog is a beautiful way to do so. But there is a lot of things which you can do wrong in Downward Facing Dog. And that's maybe a good reminder for you as well to check in with some of the things you might want to do slightly different. I look forward to introduce you to Ardha Mukha Svanasana, called in Sanskrit Down Dog today. And let's begin our practice. Beginning our tutorial of downward facing dog in all fours in tabletop. So come onto your hands and knees, bring your palms underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips and untuck your toes here for a moment. And to get into down dogs, we're going to move into it straight away and then come into smaller details of down dog. I always like to take my hands one hand width further forward to measure the distance and then curl your toes under for a moment and then just place your hips back to your heels and have a look that your elbows are still a little bit bent otherwise you might want to move your palms a bit further back. Let's do that two more times so rocking the body forward and then all the way back. Bring the shoulders slightly over the wrists again, claw through the fingers and then pause about halfway again. And before moving into down dock, if you look at your fingers, you see the index finger and the thumb, they're creating an L shape. And those two fingers are your main point of grip in down dock. And what do you want to do? You want to press those two fingers, that L shape firmly down, and then do that with all other fingers. So you spread your fingers wide, and by clawing the mat, you try to take the weight out of your wrists. Really important to keep our wrists healthy in yoga. Have a look then that your bony bits of the elbows are pointing out and then spread your toes wide and we're just going to go into it let's see how we go so bring the hips back now instead of bringing them fully back start to lift your knees and then very very slowly make your way into your first downward facing dog maybe ever maybe for this practice and then as you get up you want to have your knees bent. A lot of us think we want to straighten the legs fully, but then we get a curve into the low back. So keep it bent and don't worry about having the heels too far down. Maybe they are on the mat, but maybe they are lifted. And now just work for a moment on pressing those fingertips down and think of lengthening your arms more. The hips are lifting and the more you bend your knees, the more you will feel your spine can actually straighten. And then come back down. Sit your hips back and just shake your wrists out for a moment. And down dog, although it seems like, or it is a resting pose in yoga, can feel like quite a lot on the body. And especially we want to make sure that the shoulders are relaxed in down dog. So let's come back in. Dive forward with your hands. Again, claw through the fingers so your wrists almost lift off. Curl your toes down. And then start to lift at your hips and come into this upside down V shape, downward facing dog. Have a look that you're not straightening your elbows fully. You have a little bit of a bend. And then if your shoulders are towards the ears, lift them away and really drop the head. So shake the head, yes and no for a moment. And now from here, what we're gonna do, we walk our down dog for a moment. So you're creating a bit more strength in down dog, bend the right knee to the chest, straighten the left leg a bit more, and then do that with the other leg, bend the left knee, straighten the right leg more, and then come back into down dog. And just see how far you wanna bring the heels down. If you get tired, come down earlier. Otherwise we take a moment in stillness in down dog. Again, the fingers are really active. The wrists, they barely get any weight. Inhale, lift the hips. And then on the exhale, slowly release. And again, shake your wrists out for a moment. So it's sometimes tricky to explain with what we want to do with the shoulders. But think of bringing the shoulder blades away from one another. So they're kind of wrapping around and slightly forward. So they're not raising up to the ears. 
So for one more round, we're going to lift into down dog and you probably feel really comfortable to do that now. You can bend your knees a lot, you can straighten your legs a little bit more but always have a micro bend. And now the last thing I would say to check in here, if you have the right distance between your feet and your hands. And to do that, lift the heels and roll forward into plank. And now if you feel like your shoulders come too far forward or they're not reaching forward, you want to have the shoulders over the wrists, then adjust and bring your feet further back or further forward. So shoulders over the wrists in a plank and then lift the hips back and up and then you're back in down dog and that's roughly the distance you want to have. Take another in breath, another exhale. Beautiful work. And then, yeah, this is me for it for today's practice. You can carry on doing your downward facing dogs. You can do that against the wall as well with your heels to take a bit of pressure off your arms. It's a wonderful posture, but really make sure that your shoulders stay in ease. And we use down dog on this channel a very very often for our practices. So hopefully this was useful. Let me know how it went. And I look forward to seeing you again in another practice. From my heart to yours, namaste. Mm -hmm.